Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. We got mail. Santee, can you do a video on funerals on the frontier? Rogue Viper. Funerals in the Old West. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. This may come as a shock to some of you, but in the 19th century, people died. Yeah, lots of them. Get three coffins ready. Uh huh? Mourning, or grieving, in the era was a very social thing. Lots of expectations were put on the immediate family of a deceased relative, and early on a set of rules were followed. Representing spiritual darkness, it was presumed that they would wear black mourning clothes and sometimes jewelry made from the hair of the departed. As far as the time frames, the period of how long one mourns depended on the relationship to the deceased. As time went on, these practices became less stringent in America, especially in the West. Many communities may not have practiced all this due to resources and expense. My mistake, poor coffins. If they had a parlor, it was decorated in dark fabrics, including draping photos and paintings with black and covering up the windows and mirrors. The parlor is the same area we call a living room today. That label came about after families stopped displaying the bodies there in the 20th century. Now, in a smaller cabin, the deceased was probably laid on a bed. So the undertaker could provide a service in his dedicated parlor, and the convenience factor was definitely a plus. However, I'm not going to go into undertakers today. That we'll leave for addressing the part episode. The term wake came about due to the practice of observing the deceased for three days to make sure they were really dead and not just ill or sleeping. Hey, how'd I get here? Going out in style depended on your finances or your status in the community. The coffin could be anything from a plain pine box nailed together to a fancy varnished one with a kitchenette. Oh, okay, that's not true. <laughs> now, embalming was done. The invention of formaldehyde in 1859 helped preserve bodies so they didn't decompose as quickly. During the Civil War, there were actually embalming stations, so we know that many undertakers knew this practice during the era of westward expansion. For life is quite absurd, and death's the final word. You must always face the curtain with a... Hey, I'm trying to sleep here. However, if you died out on a wagon train, you were likely buried right there with not so much as a coffin. Your effects were taken and given to a next of kin or a friend. Especially things like guns and a pocket watch were likely not buried with the ex-animate because they were useful to the living. The celebration of life was held usually before the burial and included comfort foods followed by a service. Then the family and friends would walk alongside the wagon carrying the deceased to the gravesite. If it was a cavalry officer, a riderless horse would be in the procession with boots facing backwards in the stirrups. Next week, cemetery in the Old West. <laughs> And now, for the winner of the 40,000 sub giveaway. Congratulations, Chris Cutler. You have won the autographed real cannon picture and 10 star shot by Bill Brazelton's ghost. Please message me on Facebook listed in the description field or go to the About section of this channel and email me your address and I'll get your winnings out to you as soon as possible. Congratulations and thanks for watching. Well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you on down the trail.